Uh, dear everyone, thank you for your attendance and welcome to this uh, Absorber technology session. Hope it will be useful for most of you. So as David mentioned, we'll go first, go through a short refresher on the Absorber technology uh, to make sure everybody understand the functionality of those products. And then we'll cover the major trends on the market, application, as well as the supporting product and, uh, and solutions. As most of you know, uh, an electromagnetic wave consists of magnetic and uh, electric field. Uh, the reaction and interaction of a material to this wave is related to the permittivity and permeability characteristics. And those parameters are the ones we are playing with when we are developing an absorber. The principle of absorber is different from the traditional EMI shielding, which is based on electrically conductive solution. Traditional EMI shielding based on um, metal solution is working through reflection. So it's useful when you want to prevent a wave to come in or to get out of an environment but it's not eliminating the wave itself. Uh, the waves continuing to reflect, uh, which can cause a problem in some environment when you want to avoid any disturbance between several area into, uh, into your environment. So for those reasons, um, the absorber technology, uh, which purpose is to absorb and eliminate uh, the wave is a complement to the traditional EMI shielding. So they can be used in combination or uh, absorber can even be used uh, standalone depending on the um, application. One and another important point uh, comparing the absorber and the traditional um, shielding solution um, is the fact that in absorbers uh, technology, the thickness matter. Uh, if you want to uh, maximize and optimize the loss uh, through the material. Um, thickness is one important parameter, which is not the case in the traditional uh, metal based shielding uh, solutions. There are three main types of absorber. Um, the first category is what we call the free space absorbers. So it involves uh, waves propagating over long distance. Uh, so it's mainly about um, outdoor application and structural application um, like antenna, radars, uh, stealth application for military, etc., etc. Uh, into this free space category, you've got two subtypes. Uh, the first one is the reflectivity absorber. The purpose here is to reduce the reflection from conductive surfaces that could disturb your, um, uh, your environment. And the second one is called uh, insertion loss. Uh, the purpose here is to prevent the energy emitted from a source to disturb another point. At the bottom of the slide, uh, you can see um, a standard way to characterize those free space um, absorber. Uh, the performance um, is called either than the reflectivity or insertion loss, and it, it's expressed in dB, in, this, in decibel. And to give you a flavor, an idea of what uh, this decibel means, um, you can use the rules, uh, for example, for this SF product, uh, you can see that at 9 uh, gigahertz frequency, you get a reflectivity of minus 20 dB. This minus 20 dB means that 99% of the energy of the wave is absorbed in the product. So only 1% is either reflected or transmitted. So that's already uh, quite a good um, performance. Uh, and if you go lower um, uh, above this minus 20 dB, you can achieve even more uh, between 99 and, uh, and close to 100% absorption. The second category of absorber is what we call the cavity resonance. And here we are 
talking about wave propagating on shorter distance. Um, that means that this cavity resonance apply when we are talking about environment at the PCB or electronic enclosure level, not the outdoor um, application. Um, obviously, when having a wave into an enclosed system, um, the trapped energy resulting in standing wave and creating uh, potentially interferences um, in the components. So you can see an illustration here uh, on how um, that works with um, an enclosure on the left side without any absorber and an enclosure, the same enclosure with having an absorber placed at the bottom of the cavity. So that is uh, reducing uh, the uh, wave. The cavity resonance absorbers are uh, mainly characterized by attenuation, what we call attenuation, so it's different from the reflectivity for the free space. That is also expressed in dB, uh, but in dB per centimeter, and that's where you can understand that the thickness matter. Obviously, the thicker the material will is, the the higher it will be will the will be the attenuation. Uh, so these attenuation graphs are um, important when uh, comparing, especially different grades of product. Uh, you can you can see how they are perform performing uh, each uh, with another one. The third category is what we call the near field absorber. Uh, and this one is on either shorter distance pro propagation, um, and it, we are talking here about electronic component level. So you've got the long distance level for free space, intermediate for cavity resonance at the PCB and enclosure, and the near field is really at the component level. Um, so of course, in this near field application, um, the magnetic field is most of the contribution. So we are talking here about um, solution working in the range of tens of megahertz to few gigahertz, two or three gigahertz. Um, and typically the purpose of using this near field absorber is to uh, patch your absorber directly onto the component that is creating the noise. So placing the material directly uh, on the top of the source of the unwanted noise. So that's the reason these products are very thin and very compact. So you don't need really to design in uh, a specific place uh, to place the absorber and that could be used as a, a short notice fixed. Um, this absorber can be also used as um, surface current suppressor um, on, the, on the cable, as you can see on the, on the second picture. So after this reminder on the um, absorber technology, let's dive into uh, today's and future um, challenges and trends on the market. One of the two major trends is the shift uh, toward higher frequencies into the uh, millimeter wave. So this is going uh, across multiple markets, um, like the automotive uh, with sensors, which are paving the way to autonomous cars, as well in the telecom uh, with the ramp up in the, in the 5G. Um, as you can see, um, uh, with the um, uh, small tab, the small matrix at the bottom of the first column, um, obviously the allocated frequency bands for 5G are different countries to countries, uh, but overall, there is a trend from uh, the, four, uh, the 4G, which is the sub 1 or sub 3 gigahertz, uh, into major band like uh, 4, 5, uh, 24 to 30 gigahertz, and even, even above that in the 37, 40 gigahertz for some countries for this uh, 5G application. Uh, obviously, um, the military and aerospace industry are, um, have been using high frequency band for a long time and they are still uh, going towards the, 
you know, even higher frequency, uh, even above uh, 100 gigahertz. Um, obviously, there are some rationale behind this uh, movement of uh, going higher frequencies. Um, higher frequencies enabling higher accuracy, which is important for um, sensor application, for example. Higher death rate, uh, which is important for the, all the telecom and datacom application. Or enabling a more compact design, uh, which is also a constraint or a trend that uh, designers are playing with for uh, various type of uh, consumer or even medical and industrial and health devices. The point is that this trend of going uh, millimeter wave higher frequencies is also creating new EMI challenges. And going higher frequencies mean uh, playing with wave having shorter wavelength. And those shorter wavelengths are creating new um, challenges for the traditional metal-based EMI technology. Any small gaps in that kind of uh, solution uh, is, uh, is a point uh, of leakage uh, for these high frequency waves. It's also generating potentially harmonic signal and at the end, it's required then um, tuned product to eliminate and not only reflect, eliminate uh, the targeted and wanted frequencies. And again, as I mentioned, uh, usually the absorber and the traditional uh, EMI solution uh, can be combined together to optimize the overall shielding. Uh, but in some application, even absorber standalone can be used to fix your issue. Going into uh, further um, detailed um, uh, industry. Um, so as I mentioned, the telecom and datacom is one of the um, industry uh, shifting towards um, millimeter wave and higher frequencies. Uh, that's the transition everybody I've heard about, I guess, on the going towards the 5G. Um, that means, um, using along with this uh, 5G ramp, uh, MIMO antenna, uh, which are uh, multiple antenna type, uh, managing multiple transmission and receiving antenna. So a lot of uh, small antenna close together, uh, which is creating um, crosstalk uh, challenges and required some um, isolation to each other. Uh, in this telecom datacom, uh, you may have heard also a new standard uh, that is starting to emerge and starting to be applied already in some devices uh, on the wireless communication with the Wi-Fi. Uh, it's usually worked on the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band, and now it's moving towards the um, 6 gigahertz. So that's the what we call the Wi-Fi 6. So it's enabling dual band, it's enabling uh, more stability and more, um, more data rate. Test and measurement um, industry um, also shifting into the higher frequencies. Uh, we've got the example of the security scanner for airport, for example, or hotel or um, official governmental buildings, etc. Um, you may remember in the in the past or still current uh, technology running at some airports uh, where you get um, uh, metal detection or X-ray detection. Um, no um, airports and some are already equipped with this technology are going towards uh, millimeter wave uh, 3D scanners. Uh, working in high frequency in the 70 to 80 gigahertz, uh, which is enabling uh, higher accuracy and um, faster response, uh, which is uh, an important point uh, for the flow uh, of people in, the, in airports. Obviously, also all the testing and measuring equipment uh, supporting uh, the automotive sector uh, and, the, and the 5G, 
uh, needs to align and, and go into this um, higher frequency range. And the automotive um, ADA safety and security uh, related to the sensors and radars and, um, and paving the way for um, driveless uh, cars, autonomous cars. Uh, this one I've been working for some year in the past at 24 gigahertz, um, but know that we are um, going towards the higher level of autonomous car. Uh, we need better accuracy and better uh, reliability uh, and going into the uh, 76 to 81 gigahertz range. Also inside the car, some uh, presence uh, sensors are also working on the same range as some uh, industrial sensors are working in the, in the 60 gigahertz range. And obviously in the automotive um, sector, uh, one important point uh, around the autonomous car is also the communication um, in the future um, so that the car can drive without any driver. Obviously, the cars will need to communicate with um, a multiple, uh, multiple equipment like the other cars, like uh, satellite, like the road signs, like the buildings, uh, even probably with the people in the future so that the car is aware by itself of all these environment. And that would require the equipment uh, working not only with 5G, but also Wi-Fi. So to support those high frequency application, uh, there are already some solution on the shelf and, and some will be uh, released um, soon in the, in the future. Uh, we've got traditional foam and elastomer already um, addressing um, the higher frequency range. Uh, in terms of foam for free space application, in the layered portfolio, we've got the AN, which are uh, multi-layer foams, and the HR. And the uh, elastomer absorber for cavity resonance uh, purpose, uh, we've got MMI, GCS, and we even have, um, it's not listed here, but we even have some uh, 5G uh, dedicated grades uh, with um, tuned um, performance for the 5G dance. What's coming next in this um, high frequency absorber is the textured absorber. Uh, as you can imagine, on some uh, safety and security related application like the automotive sensors and the uh, 3D uh, imaging scanners, uh, performance and reliability is key. Um, so we have been working on developing a concept of a textured absorber to tune this high frequency from 60 gigahertz to 90 gigahertz with a high uh, performance in reflectivity uh, above 20, 20 dB. Uh, typical would be around uh, 25. Um, this uh, technology will be available in different um, form factors. Um, that could be sheets, but that will be also um, available um, uh, through a thermoplastic injection uh, with uh, 3D complex 3D shapes. Uh, the part with having this textured um, absorber made of plastic or elastomer uh, for uh, reflectivity or insertion loss purpose uh, towards the foam is that with foam we've got a certain limitation in terms of uh, operating temperature, uh, reliability and um, compliance to harsh environment as you can imagine. Uh, thermoplastic absorbers also um, hot uh, sub product line uh, where we are extending the range of available grade um, to match the market requirement. Uh, so again, one of the key feature of this uh, thermoplastic absorber is the 3D shape that we cannot achieve uh, through standard um, compression molding or rolling uh, process or machining process, which is quite expensive. And it's also a high volume compliant uh, process, uh, which is um, important for certain high volume application like in the automotive or uh, telecom um, application. The second major trend I wanted to talk about is the compact design. 
which is related um, not only to the form factor, but also related to the um, multiple functionality that we are trying to gather uh, in, in, uh, in one system uh, in creating new problem. Um, so yeah, it, it's mainly related about not only the miniaturization, which is not something new, but still going on, and, um, and the multifunctional uh, trend uh, of um, devices in some, uh, in some market and, and application. So again, this is uh, like um, high frequency um, topic. This is across multiple markets. It's not only about and L devices, um, which is obvious, uh, but also on um, sensors and uh, all connected device, uh, which designer try to design as small and as slow weight as possible for either technical reason, for uh, user friendly uh, purpose or for cosmetic reason as well. Obviously, consequences of going smaller uh, form factor and densification of electronic is uh, much more complex EMI challenges like uh, coupling antenna, uh, coupling issue, uh, antenna descents, uh, crosstalk, etc. as the active components are getting closer um, to each other. You can imagine an IoT device uh, which is combining quite a lot of uh, a wireless communication system like the Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi, the near field communication, the RFID, um, the 5G, but also handling wireless charging, a camera, GPS. You can imagine the number of potential disturbance uh, you may have and how tricky it is to make sure that your uh, device will uh, perform correctly. So a few, few example um, on the uh, compact uh, design and uh, uh, multiple function um, application. Um, one important one is in the datacom, uh, which is supporting the, the 5G telecom growth. Um, uh, first point about the form factor of optical module transceiver. Uh, that's very uh, small package uh, combining um, a lot of uh, functionality and having a lot of uh, energy coupling uh, challenges. Um, high-speed connector for the same uh, type of application in the data um, data server um, application. I mean, this optical transceiver and uh, in data server, it's it's going from the 100 gigabyte towards the 400 and even the 800 gigabyte, uh, still um, aligning with a even smaller uh, form factor, and at the same time with an increased frequency going from 12.5 gigahertz towards the, the 25 plus 5, 25.5 uh, gigahertz. So combining um, both trend of uh, having a compact design, but also going into the higher frequency that is even amplifying the, challenge, the EMI challenging, the challenges. Sorry. Uh, in the telecom, I mentioned already the MIMO antenna. In, you, if you have a picture here, so you can understand maybe better what we are talking about. I mean, all these uh, round out are um, small antenna and um, they are uh, very directional, but uh, are overlapping each other. Um, and to avoid um, having this overlap and creating disturbance, you need to isolate uh, one antenna to, to the other one. Uh, in the telecom, uh, the trends also in the um, other um, equipment like the, the base station uh, and the 5G will also uh, require some um, additional um, equipment like the small cells uh, because the higher frequencies are, are good to increase the data rate. Uh, the issue is that you cannot carry over long distance uh, the signal. Uh, so that means you need a repeater and amplifier uh, covering the territory to make sure that the signal from the antenna is uh, 
is arriving to the uh, end user um, in a reliable way. Um, and that means at the end, a more densification of the antenna mast um, that will combine um, the 4G and the 5G uh, telecom uh, infrastructure. Um, you may have seen already a mast, uh, a telecom mast with all the space station and antenna um, on the mast. And, and, and again, as, as at the scale, at the, as a MIMO antenna, you need to make sure that all these infrastructure equipment are not uh, disturbing each other. So you need to avoid crosstalk between the antenna and the different, uh, the different equipment. Um, in the automotive, uh, going towards the um, autonomous driving, uh, and we mentioned that uh, with the sensor and, um, and the 5G communication, that means that the onboard computer in the future will have to manage much more than he, he has been managing um, today, uh, which was mainly about the infotainment unit and uh, the maintenance of the car, etc. Uh, the onboard computer will have to manage much more uh, function in the future with all these uh, important safety and security um, uh, feature. Um, and obviously that means more computing, uh, uh, more EAT, more um, EMI challenges because at the end the designer tried to, to keep the um, computer unit as small as possible. So the point is that we are um, embedding new feature and new functionality while keeping or even going smaller into the into the, the design. Yeah, I mean, even the sensors um, and the high frequency trend is helping in that sense of going a more compact sensor, uh, which obviously is helping because you can imagine that the um, uh, the infrastructure of a car is already uh, very busy and uh, and very dense. So adding some new um, new feature and new functionality uh, is always a challenge um, to to place and to um, implement without uh, affecting any other uh, equipment in a car. And that's where apps over are are also helping to to avoid the disturbance between the different uh, electronic units. Uh, last column is the consumer. I think this one is more or less obvious. That's uh, something uh, everyone can um, face uh, in his uh, everyday life. I mean, all the laptop, tablets, mobile phone, all these handset devices uh, have been going uh, thinner and lower weight. Um, and that's still the trend. That's how um, the different manufacturers are trying to, uh, to differentiate. Uh, in the consumer bucket, uh, also that was mentioned in the in the previous slide, all these uh, smart home or uh, IoT devices uh, with uh, multiple function and uh, and multiple um, wireless uh, communication system uh, are also um, embedding more and more feature uh, uh, with the within an optimized uh, compact um, design. So regarding those um, multifunctional and compact uh, trends, um, we already have some um, solution and technology on the shelf again, uh, but also this new emerging application uh, bringing some new challenging challenges required um, new concept uh, uh, and additional performances. Um, so we have uh, thin absorbers uh, that can support this uh, compact design. Uh, today, our cavity resonance elastomer can be produced down to 0. Uh, 0.25 millimeter thickness, and uh, we are working towards the below 0. Uh, 15 millimeter thickness. Uh, talking about the near field absorber, uh, noise suppressor with high permeability are already a very thin product. Uh, they are ranging from 0.06 to 0.4 millimeter. Um, so very thin um, already, a very thin solution already. Uh, we are looking also 
uh, at releasing a new platform of dispensable absorber, uh, which will help in the sense of um, tuning the volume and the dimension of the cavity uh, resonance uh, absorber. Um, as you can see on the picture on a certain um, telecom application, for example, uh, where you've got a um, quite complex uh, design with all these different shape and dimension of uh, cavities that you need to isolate um, different area onto your PCB. And where you need to stick uh, an absorber at the bottom um, to eliminate the uh, unwanted frequency. That's quite um, a challenge in production and in terms of supply chain to uh, implement uh, a die cut absorber from a sheet, for example. Um, so dispensable process where you only need to manage one product, um, one tube of product, for example, a compound, and just have to tune your program to uh, tune the volume and the associated sickness uh, will, uh, will help not only in terms of design, but also in terms of uh, manufacturing process and simplification of the of the supply chain, which is uh, which is overall um, a cost saving. So we are intending to develop this platform to cover the full range of frequency um, from a few uh, hundreds of um, point of uh, a few hundreds of megahertz. Sorry. Uh, up to uh, tens of, uh, of gigahertz. Uh, we have been also launching, launching recently a um, new concept of absorber uh, we, that we call the gap filler absorber. Uh, this one are a very low shore, very low deflection force absorber, uh, which are conformable so they can be implemented even in a tight space. Uh, where um, there is no specific um, uh, space or where there is a certain limitation or no, no dedicated design for an absorber. Uh, and that would help to, um, to use an absorber without uh, stressing uh, the components and as well as absorbing the potential mechanical tolerances that you may have in your, uh, in your system. So this gap filler will help you um, cancel uh, the um, energy coupling that you may have in your uh, in your system. And then again, the thermoplastic is also supporting these uh, compact design trends in the sense that um, the challenge with designer in um, requiring an absorber uh, to fix their EMI issue is that um, in many cases, that is coming on the last stage. Obviously, when electronic and mechanical designer are designing a new product, they are not ex they are trying to optimize everything to avoid any any EMI problem. Uh, but with this trend of going um, multifunction, higher frequency, and uh, compact design uh, on the last stage of the um, EMC test, you realize that you've got a problem. Uh, and that means that no design were planned to uh, implement an absorber. And that means you have to play with, uh, with a dense um, design where you would need to implement an absorber which somehow could have a tricky shape, a 3D uh, shape, and that's where thermoplastic can, uh, can help um, uh, compared to the other uh, traditional absorber like uh, die sheet, or uh, machine parts, which are very expensive. So I wanted to finish this presentation to go uh, slightly um, deeper step into um, a selection of uh, application, um, even if we already uh, cover quite a lot, I guess. Um, going back to the um, sensors and radars, and that's true uh, specifically for automotive, even if the sensor also used uh, more and more in uh, industrial application. Uh, as sensors, um, as I said, are paving the way towards automotive um, cars, um, that is a safety and security element um, that we that the car needs to rely on. So um, high performance, accuracy, and reliability is mandatory 
for that kind of application. Uh, so cavity resonance, um, Asselberg are uh, already used um, at the um, uh, electronic enclosure level as well as the uh, as part of the radom. It depends on the on on the on the design, which can be a specific uh, manufacturer to to manufacturer. Um, lidar is another. Uh, type of uh, sensors that is also supporting this um, uh, autonomous car um, trend. Um, this one compared to the to the to the radars supposed to help the car to get a 360 picture 360 environment of the car. So it's a complement uh, technology towards the radar. Uh, to double, I mean, to double, yeah, to double the, the picture. I mean, radar and, 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 and LiDAR can work together to ensure the most accurate picture of the car environment. So also um, a safety related um, device uh, requiring um, high performance accuracy and reliability. And um, the design of those LiDAR um, technologies is uh, different from radars and requiring uh, most of the time uh, more um, tricky solution uh, because of the uh, dense, um, dense design. And, and that's where uh, thermoplastic um, absorber um, are or could be used um, to, to address this, um, this, uh, this issue. Uh, optical transceiver that we talked about very quickly as well. Um, as you can see, there was no picture on the previous slide, but that's a very uh, small connector uh, having a, a high density of um, electronics, uh, generating a lot of energy. Um, so manufacturer has got different design, but overall they are facing the same issue of um, of having uh, energy coupling um, all around the all around the device, uh, which is affecting overall the uh, reliability of the of the data uh, flow through the through the optical transceiver. So to ensure that the uh, the data that is coming in and going through the optical transceiver, uh, you need to manage this coupling energy uh, to uh, minimize the uh, bit error. Um, and, and for those, they are using a uh, very thin absorber, as you can imagine, uh, given the capacity of the design. Uh, they are using also low deflection force um, gap filler absorber, which can conform uh, and don't need, uh, doesn't need a specific design to be implemented. And probably dispensable uh, will be also of, uh, of benefit for, for them to, to tune an exact um, uh, volume of um, of absorber required. Um, the body scanner, uh, again, a safety and security uh, device uh, for um, airport uh, specifically. Uh, so obviously need uh, high accuracy and reliability. Uh, the point here is not only about the electronics itself of the of the scanner, uh, where you can use, uh, let's say, a traditional absorber, uh, but it's more about the structure of the scanner itself. Uh, obviously, when you want to scan someone, you need to make sure that you don't have any disturbance from the structure, from the metal structure of the of the scanner, or any structure around the scanner, uh, which can cause uh, unwanted reflection and disturb the, um, the, the end result. So that's where um, technology like the textured absorber can bring um, the um, high, um, high performance as well as uh, high robustness and, uh, and re reliability uh, to protect from, uh, from reflection. And uh, last example in the telecom area on the active antenna unit. Um, this is already true for uh, previous generation, but uh, going even more complex. Uh, those um, active antenna showing a very complex uh, cavity um, cavity, um, cavity design into diecast that you need to isolate. And um, as I mentioned, um, absorber 
is used in combination with the diecast itself, uh, which is used uh, not only as a, as a structure, as, um, as an heat spreader, but also as a, a, an EMI shield, the Faraday cage. But on top of that, to make sure that the, the reflection that you may have uh, into a cavity is not escaping and uh, creating disturbance with a, with a cavity close by, I mean, you need to ensure that you eliminate uh, the uh, unwanted wave and not just only reflect it. So that's why traditionally um, you use an absorber at the bottom of the cavity. Uh, and obviously those uh, complex design, as I mentioned, with various shape, uh, various, um, various uh, thicknesses, uh, various uh, dimension, uh, it's difficult to manage in terms of uh, production and, and supply chain. And that's where dispensable uh, absorber, which is uh, uh, dispensable, is already a, a known process into this industry and across many industries. Uh, that's a very, um, very um, friendly um, process in, in the sense that you just have to reprogram your machine and you don't have to, to build a, a new process. That's an automatic process which is compliant with high volume application. So those uh, dispensable absorber will help also uh, on this telecom uh, application. So to conclude, um, as you have seen, I mean, multiple markets are progressing towards the higher frequency. Uh, that's an overall trend. And uh, the compact design is still a trend that we have seen over years and it's still continue and no one know where it will stop. Uh, there might be a limit in the future, uh, but science is also moving forward and, uh, and supporting this trend. And this, um, these two major trends in the, in the market are requiring new, are bringing new challenges in terms of EMI and requiring um, tuned and uh, innovative solution. Um, so, I mean, these, uh, these trends are obviously, as mentioned, um, are um, are used uh, for various reasons uh, around the data rate, uh, the uh, reliability, uh, the performance, or just the uh, smaller size, which is enabled by the um, higher frequency as well. Uh, but one important point for the for for the overall customer, uh, and not only for designer, is also to have um, not only innovative and performant product but also uh, cost efficient and uh, high volume compliant processes. Uh, and that's where Laird is also supporting, creating um, and launching new platform uh, to support in, the, in that sense uh, um, and supporting the different uh, processes and, and form factors. So overall, as you understood with this um, uh, high frequency coming in on various application, it's becoming more and more difficult to fix the issue with the old way, with the old uh, traditional EMI issue where you were simply trying to design a Faraday cage um, over, over your product. Uh, it's become more sensitive now and most of the case uh, you need to use uh, combined um, traditional EMI solution and uh, absorbing um, technology uh, solution. Uh, so Laird has been leading Absorber for quite a while and uh, will continue to do so. As you have seen, we've got a uh, different um, new platform and innovative concept to, to support uh, our customer. Hope this session has been useful to everyone and uh, obviously happy to discuss and support you further on your uh, particular needs. Thank you everyone. <laughs>